Hello mate and welcome to the next exciting instalment of our Unity visual novel series. In this video we're going to start putting images on the screen, something which I'm sure you're all very excited about. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will run across the screen at the end of the video. So there's a few things that we need to do before we can actually achieve our end goal. Firstly, we need to create an object inside of our hierarchy, which is going to be our background image. So what we have to do is right click and we're going to go to UI and we're going to click on image. And as you can see, it's now created a canvas and an image underneath it. What we're going to do is we're going to rename our image background, making sure we spell it correctly. And we're going to hit enter. Next thing we're going to do is click on our canvas. And then what you can see here is canvas scalar, render mode, so on and so forth. What we're going to do is we're going to set screen space to camera and we're going to drag our main camera onto there like so. Now what you can see is that our UI is now scaled to our camera or rather what we're going to see when we render the game rather than being friggin massive and having to zoom out for miles to actually do anything. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change constant pixel size to scale with screen and then what you can see is that our image has shifted off like so and what we need to do is we actually need to move it so that it fits our screen. So we're going to drag it so that it fits our bottom left and I'm going to drag this so that it fills our screen. Now our background image is going to fill our screen no matter what happens and if I hit play what you'll see is that the entire screen is white, which is precisely what we want it to be. So that's our setup in here done. Now we need to jump over into our code. Now that we're in our code, we're going to go into our input decoder class as we were before. And the first thing that we have to do is underneath where we create our public list of our characters, what we're going to do is I'm just going to put a comment in here so that we know. And I'm going to say find and define the background image and I'm going to retype that just so that it actually says what I want it to say. So what we need to do is we need to create a reference to the image that we've just created in our hierarchy so that Unity knows when we say change this image to whatever image we want it to be that it's actually going to do it and know where to put it. So the first thing we need to do is set a private static uh, yes and we're going to go with a game object and we're going to call it background with a capital B and then we're going to say equals game object dot find background. Now if you remember we named and I didn't spell that correctly anyway we named our image background with a capital B so what we're saying to Unity here is find that object that has this specific name. There's a good reason why I'm doing that and it's mainly because if we were to do this in the editor, if we were to create a public uh, variable, we'd have to drag our background image in there and unfortunately there are ways that we can accidentally mess that up so that that image becomes no longer referenced. So doing it codified is just a quick way of having to not have to constantly drag references around. I know some people are going to complain saying, oh yeah, yeah, that's what Unity's for, blah, 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 don't care, <laughs> in a nutshell. So now we've defined what game object we are going to be referencing. Now we need to tell it what the image is because if we look in our inspector at our background what we can see is there are various different properties within the image itself and we need to tell Unity what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to come back into our code and we're going to say private static image because image is a thing and then we're going to say background spelling it correctly background image equals background i.e this object that we've just defined dot get component open pointy brackets image like so and then we have to put in some curly brackets or rather some parentheses and then that is Unity now knows when we say background image, it knows precisely what property of what game object, object we are referencing. 
The next thing that we need to do is we need to come back into Unity itself and we need to go into our Assets folder and we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it Resources with a capital E, Resources, like that. And then inside that folder, we're going to create another folder called Images, like that. And this is where we're going to store the images that we want to show. So if you haven't already got some collected, gather at least one image which you want to display uh, for this test and then come back to the video. So as you can see, I now have an image in there called Lucy underscore zero one, which is going to be the image that I'm going to use to test our script once we actually have it working. Now that we've done that, what we need to do is actually write some methods. And what you can see here is I have created a new region called image stuff, which is where we are going to put our methods. Nice and simple. If you want to do that, then by all means do so. And then what we'll do is we'll create a new public static void method called show image. And we're going to take in a string and we'll call it string to pass just to keep it in line with the thing that we've been using all the way through string to pass. What we now need to do is we're going to use regex, which is a nifty little thing. It's called regex, not regex. It's because it's short for regular expressions. And what it allows us to do is compare a string with a regularly used expression. In this case, we are going to be taking in a show command. We're going to be comparing it to the regular expression. And if there is a match, what will happen is it will extract the image file that we're trying to show and put it on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call it image to use. And we're going to say is a new reg X like that. Open some brackets. Now we need to put in our regular expression. We start off with an at symbol and when we open some speech marks. Inside our speech marks, we now need to type in show space, which is going to be the command. And then we're going to add some gobbledygook, which is going to be a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we need to put a question mark to say that it's a query. And then we're going to open some pointy brackets. Now we're going to give this a group name. We're telling Unity by doing this that whatever text follows show space is going to be a variable that we're going to call image file name or rather a group. And then after that, we need to tell it the range of characters that we're going to accept in our file name. In this case, I'm just going to say everything, which is just the upwards pointing arrow and a full stop. And then we need to put in a plus symbol to end and then end our line with a semicolon. Nice and simple. Now we're going to create a new variable called matches. And that is going to be image image to use dot match string to pass. So now we are comparing our regular expression, which we've defined here with the string that we've passed in at the top of the method. Now we're going to say string image to show is equal to matches dot groups in square brackets we're going to say image file name and then we're going to say dot to string and then have some parentheses there so what we've done is we've created a regular expression we've compared our regular expression to the string that we've passed in and whatever match we find is going to extract this image file name that we've created here this variable or group there We've now said image to show is whatever that is, and then we've turned it into a string just so that Unity can actually use it. Now all we're going to do is say background image. No, not that. Background image dot sprite is equal to resources dot load open brackets. Oh no, actually tell a light. We need to put in some pointy brackets there and say we're loading it in as a sprite with a capital S, open brackets, images forward slash, because if you remember, we put it into an images folder within our resources folder, and then we're going to add to their image to show. We can just come down here and tab that job done. Okay, so that is our show image method done. We could 
to avoid any errors, set the background color of our image as well, which we might do in a little while. But for now, I just want to get the very basics down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new public static void. And we're going to call this one clear screen. Like so. And then what we're going to do, oh, look at that. The editor already knows what we want to do. It's just going to say background image dot sprite is equal to null. Save that before you do anything else. Make sure there's no errors. You should have basically everything that I've got here without too much trouble. This None of this is overly complicated stuff. The, the difficulty I find that people struggle with is how the code interacts with the editor. Because it's... If you're new to Unity, it's very unclear how what we put in code actually ties into the objects that we're creating in the editor. And that is why I'm trying to minimize the amount of dragging of assets that we can do. Hence why, rather than creating a public variable in our script and dragging the background image into it so that it knows what background image we're looking for, we're actually just using the find command to find the background that way we don't have to use the editor to drag any stuff around for that bit. So there we go. So now we've got that. What we need to do now is actually tell Unity when we want to call these commands. Otherwise, they're just going to sit there fat, dumb and happy and do nothing. So in our main pass input line method, underneath the bit where we have created a new or we have created our text, what we're going to do is now we're going to say if, open brackets, arg0 equals equals, and now we're going to say show in there. So if the first word in our command is show, then we're going to say show image string to pass. Is it going to let us have, yes it is, there it is, and that's it. Now when we type in any command, when we, when we pass a command that begins with the word show, it's going to show the image, assuming that that image does exist. Now we're going to say if args.0 equals CLR SCR clear screen. That's an old basic command. And then we're going to say we're going to bring down our command here, clear screen. Shove that in there. Nice and simple. Okay. So now all we need to do is make sure that when we actually create a command that shows an image that we actually type the image name correctly otherwise it's just going to show the plain white screen or whatever image we loaded last nice and simple so the last thing that remains believe it or not is for us to actually test our script so if we jump back into our testing script we've already got this is some text so let us just input a new input line uh, yes input line equals and now we're going to say show and we're going to say lucy underscore zero one and let's just jump back to our editor and make sure we got the name of the image correctly capital l for lucy underscore zero one yep nice and easy and then all we're going to do is we're going to copy this bit that says pass that line and we're going to pass it in save our script and then Jumping back into our editor, we are going to hit the play button to test it. And now what we should see is our image. There you go. Our image has appeared on the screen. It has stretched, and that is because our preview screen is not the same size as the final image. We can force the aspect ratio. If I was to cancel that play, come into the game screen, change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 so that it matches the image resolution. We can see there's still a little bit of uh, stretching going on there. That is because we have our scene set up. If I come back to here, what you can see is that is not snapping to the edges like so. Should be able to scale that so that it scales in all four directions. If we change it to stretch, now it will fit the screen. So if I hit play this time, what we will see is there you go it now stretches to our screen and it will do for every image that we use provided that they are 16 by 9. Note because we've scaled the image in the editor if you try to use an image that has a different aspect ratio it will stretch it to 16 by 9. 
This is perfect for images that are bigger than 1920 by 1080 because it will scale them to fit the screen. However, if you're using an image with a different aspect ratio, then you're going to have to adjust the size. I would highly recommend not doing that. Okay, so that's our script tested. We can now show images, which means we are halfway to creating a pretty decent visual novel with basic functionality. So that about wraps it up for this episode. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.